Hello everybody, welcome back to the Gregorius Math video. In this video, we're going to be looking at some homotopical algebra. Uh, that is the simplicial set, and two very special morphisms in it. Now, um, no, I can't open this. <laughs> Five years later, uh... I mean, jeez. <laughs> My God. <laughs> okay, we. I'm. I'm not even gonna discuss that. Okay, so fresh pens, lovely. Okay, so first of all, what is the simplicial category? The Simplicial category, and it's denoted delta, is the simplicial category is the category whose objects and morphisms. So, of course, when you're describing category, um, unlike with set theory, where you just have to um, give it some objects, you also have to give it morphisms. Uh, so whose objects are... And then we're going to have their finite, totally ordered sets, n equal to, and then they're just going to be 0, 1, up until n, but a natural number n, and whose morphisms are order preserving. Uh, so what that means is if I say, for example, less than or equal to j, that implies that f of i is less than or equal to f of j. All right, so these are that's how we define the simplicial set. Sorry, the simplicial category. And um, ooh, fresh pen. Mm, doesn't smell good though. Um, the uh, the the simplicial set. A simplicial set, sorry, it's not the, it's A simplicial set is a contravariant functor from the simplicial category to the category of sets. All right. Um, and so we denote this in order to save time, we denote this by S sets, so simplicial sets, and it's defined as, well, the functor from the opposite category to sets. And then um, we're going to have, sim and similarly, it's dual co-simplicial set, denoted by C sets is defined as the covariant functors from the simplest category to the category of sets. Now, the goal of this video is to study two very special... Yeah, to study two very special morphisms in this set, in this category, sorry. And these two morphisms are, well, we have two special morphisms. The first one is denoted by di, and it takes you from n minus 1 to n. Recall that this is the that set right there, the object of this category. 
all right? And how it's defined is it maps k to, and actually does it piecewise. So first of all, it just maps k to k if k is less than i, okay? And it maps it to k plus 1 if k is a uh, bigger than or equal to i. And then secondly, the second morphism we have is s j, which takes you from m plus 1 down to n. And it maps k to, again, k if k is less than or equal to i, and k minus 1 if k is strictly bigger than i. So all that the difference is, is this sign right here, and the fact that this equals right here gets put here. So really they're not that difficult, they're not that uh, dissimilar. Um, anyhow. Um, okay, so what's so special about these uh, morphisms, you might ask? Here's what, this is the main lemma of the video. I won't prove it because it gets pretty technical. Um, but I'm sure that in some, like, homotopical algebra text somewhere, you'll find a proof of this. Um, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put the title of one if I can find a proof. Sorry, the title of any text or, like, papers I can find if I, if I find a proof of this. Um, but, um, in the notes that I've been reading, it's just said to be very technical, so they evade the proof. Um, I might actually try and prove it myself at some point, but anyway. Ooh, I like this green. Anyway, the the theorem is that any morphism f in a hom of n m can be written as Okay, f equals d i one up until d i r s uh, j one up until s j r, and uh, be careful. This does satisfy some conditions. So m must equal n minus s plus r. Sorry, this should say s, not r minus s plus r, where this is, where this r is this r and this s is this s. And these i1s must be in, like, um, ascending order. So that is, i1 is less than i2, is less than up until i r. And similarly, j1 must be less than j2 must be less than up until j r so, uh, sorry j s okay and um I, I i just so that you have an idea just to wrap your head around what's actually happening here um i'll give an example so the function the morphism f which takes you from 3 down to 1 um, more specifically, it maps maps zero and one to zero, and two and three to one. Uh, so this is what the rule that it satisfies. And how can it be written? Well, f equals s zero composed s two. Now this can be easily checked, but let's just. I won't check that it's equal to this, but I will check that um, these conditions are satisfied. Um, although, if you really want to go through it, you can check that this composition actually is true. Anyway, um, let's just check that those conditions are satisfied. So, what's m? m is 1. Let me just make a note on the side. 1. Uh, what's n? n is 3. So what are we going to have? 1 equals 3 minus s. Well, that's 
this right here, which is going to be 2, and then R doesn't, isn't really a thing because it, there are no D here. So that's true. Okay? Then we're gonna have that I one is well that well that satisfies the definition that that satisfies this one satisfies the lemma the the caution the I remember seeing that word for this precise meaning but never say it the I'll I'll the cautiously but I can't say it I really can't say it anyway uh, since there are no I one or I two to be less than the root to be less than. But what's J1? J1 is 0. 0 is less than 2. Another smiley face. Alright, so that's what the lemma is saying. Ooh. Anyhow, so this is, as you can tell, this is going to have some important consequences in this category. So I'll give a couple of corollaries. Um, uh, I haven't used blue on the side. So the first cor corollary is that the following, is that any morphism... F from N to M can be written as a unique factorization. And what is this unique factorization? Well, it takes N and it takes it surjectively, the S to K, and then it takes that injectively to D via D to M. Alright, so this is the first cor corollary we get. The second one we get, I'm just going to avoid this patch, I'll clean it up later. Uh, the second corollary, corollary we get is that um, we can write um, the simplicity category as uh, via these morphisms di and sj um, uh, via these um, via generators, I'll call them generators, um, with the relations, oh yeah, um, that, um, dj di equals di dj minus one, and si sj equals, um, sj si plus one, and finally, is that when we combine the two with S, J, D, I, we get, um, we get, sorry, uh, D, I, S, J minus 1. If I is less than J, we get the identity, if I equals J or J plus 1, and we get, uh, D, I minus 1, S, J, if, uh, I is bigger than J plus one, and this might look quite like a quite daunting uh, piecewise function, but actually, if you look into it a bit closer, it's actually not too difficult to check. Any hoops? This is the end of this video, and uh, well, yeah, I'll see you in the next video, whatever that may be. I'm not even gonna like say uh, what I'm doing in the next video because like. <sighs> At this point, it could be anything, really. It could be something from expanding my topology series to this series to a video on steroid algebras and cohomology operations I've been meaning to do to even Galois theory. 
which I know that Carlos de Carbo de la Vega wanted. Or even analysis, I don't even know, like, some basic measure theory. I don't even know what I'm going to do my next video on. So, yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to tell you right now what I'm going to do my next video on. All I know is there will be another video, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.